Welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. Today I'm going to work on my February NFP or nearly finished project. This is the linen heart block that I started way back in 2013. It's been sitting in my UFO bin for the past seven years. Stay tuned to see how I'm going to use this piece as a pocket. Before we get started though, I want to say a huge thank you. Over 750 of you have subscribed to this channel. I'm so very grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much. So back to this project. I was originally inspired by Jude Hill of the blog and YouTube channel Spirit Cloth. I'll put links in the description box below to her heart project that inspired this block originally and to her YouTube channel. Her work has been very inspirational for me over the years, so I hope you will take a look at some of the lovely work she does. Many of the techniques I use in this project I learned from her. As with any project, I started by gathering a large selection of supplies. It's quite an assortment of threads, lace, fabric tidbits, and more, and while I likely will use only a small portion of these, I like to have lots to choose from. I have a few beads, though I'm not sure I'm going to use any on this project. Then there is lace, which I think might add a nice touch. There's an assortment of velvet and other fabrics that I'd like to cut some smaller hearts out of. And as always, there's a good assortment of threads, mostly pearl cotton today, as I'm hoping to use this as a pocket on a purse, and I want the pearl cotton for its strength and durability. I also added a couple of metallic threads as I think they would look great against these deep reds. They aren't very strong though, so I'm not sure they'll make the cut. To be functional as a pocket on the outside of a bag, this piece needs to be bigger, so I'm basting the linen heart onto a larger piece of muslin. Not only will this provide space to add on to the block, but it will provide stability to the entire piece. The basting is done from the back, but it won't show on the front if done carefully. With heavy linen like this, I'm just barely catching the back side of the linen threads with the basting needle and thread. I use my fingers underneath to make sure I'm not stitching through to the front side, and then I check periodically. The basting stitches are approximately half an inch long, and the rows of stitching are a little over one inch apart. I stitch back and forth across the block until the entire block is secured to the muslin. It goes pretty quickly and it helps the layers of fabric work together as one unit. Once the basting is done, the fun begins. I'm thinking about using some odd bits of patchwork that have been lying about, including some bits of faux paper piecing patchwork that I've done in the past using scraps that were given to me by another quilter who was only going to throw them away. I split this long piece of red patchwork so I can use some of it on both sides of the heart. Let me know in the comments section below if you would like me to do a tutorial on how to do this type of piecing in the future. I keep trying different things until I find an arrangement I like. Next, I played with the top and bottom borders. I didn't like the blue-gray piece on this project, but I do like the narrow piece of brown patchwork that was trimmed from another project. Among my stash, I found a strip of old brown velvet sashing that I disassembled, as well as a piece of brown cotton corduroy. Looking at that bottom border, I realized that one solid piece is not as nice as a pieced one, So I'll cut a section from each fabric and piece them together. Once stitched, I fold over the edge and press the seam. I do want to use lots of hearts on this piece, so I'm cutting more in various sizes from the velvet scraps. I found it worked best to fold the velvet in half with wrong sides together and then cut out a half heart shape. They need a tiny bit of trimming to even up, but turn out great. 
Now that I know where everything is going to go, it's time to pin it in place and get stitching. I start with the two-pieced borders, measuring to make sure everything is even. The edges are stitched down with a visible whip stitch using the same thread I used when I pieced them originally. Then it's time to stitch the top and bottom borders down, making sure everything is staying square. At last it is time to start the boro stitching on the heart itself. I'm going to start with this bright red patch as it seems the least secure and I don't want it to ravel anymore. I'm using a straight stitch parallel to the outer edge of the heart. I don't worry about tucking in all the loose silk threads. They simply add character to the piece. But I do make sure that my stitches secure the edges down. Boro stitching like this can make a weak piece of fabric much stronger. I added a little bit of space between every two rows to add some additional visual interest. On the velvet piece above, I simply did several rows of evenly spaced straight stitching. I like how the fabric pulls together with the stitches and gives added texture. Then I'm on to another silk piece that sits in the upper left. For this one I'm going to do parallel rows that follow the curve of the heart. Next, I'm working on the lowest section. I'm going to do a two-directional stitch here that will have a series of little crosses when it's finished. First, all the stitches are done vertically with each row offset to the previous one. Then I'll switch directions and do the same thing horizontally, but crossing each vertical stitch. I love the texture this crossed stitch creates in the fabric. There are just a few smaller patches to go now. This little wool patch is going to get a stitch pattern that reminds me of the patchwork of farm fields. I've used it before on several different projects. It can be a little wonky, but on this project it'll work well. The hardest part is getting the first foundation row fairly even. My stitches didn't come out quite square, but they're consistent enough that it works. Next is this little piece of red corduroy. I'm doing a straight stitch, counting the whales of the corduroy to place my stitches so they fall in a diagonal pattern. Then the tiny top piece gets some simple straight stitching. I realized that the heart had gotten a bit misshapen with the stitching, so I added a slim curve of red wool. Before I can stitch it down, I need to remove the feather stitching so that it's not too bulky underneath it. I've used three rows of straight stitching to stitch it in place, one on each edge and one down the center. It helps to make the heart much more symmetrical. 
I couldn't find the exact same thread I'd used for the original feather stitching, but this one is pretty close. I had to take it out and redo it twice because I kept getting the stitches too large. After the fact, I realized that I should have kept the center line of the feather stitch on top of the fabrics rather than on the edge. It does even out that funny little bobble in the upper edge as well. Next, I have one last velvet piece to stitch on the heart, but I also realize that I need to do some stitching on the linen background as it's seeming very loose now. The stitching has tucked the heart in a little bit and left a little bit of wave in that linen. Luckily, I found the perfect thread in my stash that will blend in and yet still provide texture. So back to that velvet piece. I want to do a stitch that shows up and I found some great hand dyed embroidery thread that I must have purchased 15 years ago and never used. I decided to separate it into three strand units. Then I did even stitches in rows about half an inch apart and used my small ruler to check the spacing as I went. I didn't film all of this, but there were rows of horizontal and diagonal stitches in both directions to complete the pattern. I love the effect. There was a gap between some of the fabrics at the lower corner, so I cut a little heart out of the brown velvet and stitched it on with a buttonhole stitch. So far, so good. I'm happy with the way this is coming. Now it's time to deal with the linen ground. I'm using my ruler and an air erasable pen to mark lines about half an inch apart on the linen. I only mark what I can stitch before it disappears. I'm going to do the same crossed stitch pattern that I did on the red piece, so I'll stitch all the horizontal lines first, marking as I go. I did find that I wanted a line of stitching in between, but I did not mark those lines and just stitched them, keeping halfway in between as my eye judged. I don't need to mark the verticals as I will simply stitch so that each stitch gets crossed and it goes pretty quickly and gives just the right amount of texture and it adds a great deal of strength to the linen. Here's a fun tidbit. Did you know that in the days of heavy armor, they did similar stitching to create strong padded garments to go under the armor? When I finished, I realized that there was one little edge of linen that hadn't gotten covered by the lower border. I marked that area with pins, then lifted the border and restitched the seam with a back stitch, being sure to enclose that raw linen edge. A little press and now you can't even tell and the lower border is straighter. Now it's time to add some of the additional hearts that I cut from all those velvet scraps. Once I knew where I wanted them, I pinned them all securely in place, but left the large red heart loose as it will be applied after I stitch the pocket onto the bag. Each heart will be attached using buttonhole stitch and occasionally a little bit of extra stitching for interest. The top and bottom borders needed some stitching too, so I did parallel rows of straight stitching. Mm -hmm. 
Then for the side borders, I straight stitched about one quarter inch away from each edge on all of the pieces. From the back you can really see the pattern. Sometimes I like this side almost as much as the front. Before I put the backing on, I needed to give the whole piece a light pressing. A thick terry cloth towel helps ensure that the texture won't be flattened out with the ironing. Using a light pressure and more of a press and lift type of ironing, rather than a side to side pressing, helps preserve the texture. Unfortunately, I didn't film the actual making of the finished pocket. What I did do was lay the stitched piece face down on the pocket lining fabric and stitched around the outside with a scant 1 8 inch seam to catch in the folded edges of all the faux paper pieced patchwork, leaving an opening on the bottom side. Then I turned it right side out and carefully turned those corners. Then I gave it another light pressing and slip stitched the bottom opening closed. Here you can see the pocket lining fabric, a scrap of lovely red batik that I had in my stash. When my daughter and I were cutting up the denim, we saved a number of the legs for the purpose of making bags and purses with them. The Carhartt jeans were a beautiful shade of blue that turned out to be just perfect for this pocket. Unfortunately, I don't have enough of the red fabric to line the bag, so I dug through my stash to see what I could find that would coordinate. I ended up with this lovely brown floral piece. I have enough red for one more interior pocket and maybe a little bit of trim. While it's not exactly what I'd hoped to use, this was my favorite out of everything I had, and since I'm trying very hard not to buy any new craft supplies this year, I think it will do nicely. I'll present the making of the bag in the next video, hopefully within the week. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell to be notified of new videos, and I would love if you would give this video a thumbs up. Happy stitching! I'll see you in the next video.